Hi everybody, welcome to National University. I'm Mark Bailey and we're really excited to have you here live on Facebook today for our chat with Stedman Graham. Now, Stedman is world renowned as an expert in leadership and we want to share his thoughts today with how you can apply some very simple principles to your life to discover who you are so that you can be the most successful you, but so that you're also well equipped to lead others. And Stedman says you can't lead anybody until you know who you are. I want to find out a little bit more about his background and uh, you know maybe some of the other things that you're not so familiar with with Stedman Graham, but the only way we're going to do that is to welcome him in, and he's walking in right now. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Stedman Graham. So good, Mark. Hey, good, good to see you. you. Good to see you. Have a seat. Get comfortable. Uh -huh. Thank you Relax. So much. We've got water here for you if you need it, everything you need, and we're just going to chat today if that's okay with you. Sounds good. Sounds good. You know, um, I, I don't know if a lot of folks know some of the things in your background that I was so tickled to see. Um, for example, time in the military, time playing basketball in Europe. Can, can you give us just a little bit of the, the Stedman Graham history? Um, well, I um, grew up in a small community in Whitesboro, New Jersey, and uh, grew up um, kind of in a culturally deprived community uh, where I used to hear nothing ever good comes out of Whitesboro. You know, kind of a, lived in an all black town surrounded by White County. Um, and I had that to deal with. I grew up in a family, uh, had two disabled brothers in my family, so I kind of grew up with low self-esteem, a lack of confidence in myself, and didn't really know who I was as a person, and basketball was my saving grace. Uh, I had low self-esteem, a lack of confidence, I had a lot of rage and anger. Uh, Where did and, that come from? Well, you know, just being teased all your life by young kids and having to fight every single day because people call you names. And uh, so I had to deal with that. And uh, so I didn't even really understand the value of education. Uh, basically read one book in high school. I've written 11 books now. <laughs> right. uh, so you want to ask, what, what, ask the question, what is the transformation from reading one book in high school to now writing 11 books? And uh, the transformation was I discovered you know, who I was as a person and the power that doesn't lie on the outside, the power and influence of, of your reaching your human potential lies on the inside. Uh, thus, you know, which is why I teach identity leadership. Now you've uh, been doing this, the identity leadership yeah. for what? Oh, you were telling me over 30 years now? Well, I've been focused on it for over 20 years now. Uh, I've been writing books and uh, speaking and going around the world trying to get people how to understand how to find out who they are and how to turn the learning system around because oftentimes we in school we memorize, we take tests, we repeat the information back, we get labeled with the grade and two weeks later you forget the information. So the information doesn't become relevant to your empowerment. So really what we're teaching is self-mastery, how to master yourself so that you're not defined by race and you're not defined by gender, you're not defined by community, you're not defined by house, by car, by money, by title, and, and uh, you're not defined, oftentimes people, people define me by my relationship. So I kind of, kind of get stuck right. in that box. Well, so, now for the folks that, yeah, there yeah. may be one or two people out there watching that don't know that you have been Oprah Winfrey's companion for, what, 30, yeah, it's 30 been, some it's years? Yeah, it's been a while. And it's, I would imagine, which that is a good be, thing. Oh, but yeah, absolutely. Thing, absolutely. And, yeah. and you, you, you've you never shied yeah. away from that. No. But no. you've also mm -mm. been very careful to maintain your own identity at all times. That's why I teach it. Right. It's because it's not how the world defines you, it's how you define yourself. So they'll define you by your race and define you by your background, define you by your family. And the most important thing is not to let anybody define you. Whoever defines you will always define you as less than them. So you have to constantly take your power back, which I've learned over the years that, you know, Oprah is who she is and that's a great thing. And she's a beautiful person and a wonderful person. And I applaud her and support her 150%. But that's who she is. Right. Doesn't have anything to do with your identity. So if you can put, knowing who you are, if you can take the resources of the world, organize information and knowledge and education, read well, learn well, have a cognitive ability to be able to think, then you can get yourself, pull yourself out of that, that, that box that most of us are in because we're doing the same thing over and over every single day. We wake up in the morning, we wash our face, we brush our teeth, we get something to eat, we get the kids off to school, we work all day, come home in the afternoon, spend time with the family, watch TV, go to bed, maybe, maybe we dream. 
So if you do the same thing you did yesterday as you would do today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? Nothing. And, if you, and every time you learn something, you forget it, you don't write it down, you don't organize it, you don't apply it, you have no cognitive ability to think, then information doesn't become relevant to your development. Thus you become a, a slave to the world. So you're slaving and slaving and working and working and working. You look back after 30 years and you say, you know what? I have no more in the end than I had in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not growing, I'm not developing, and I'm not building. And the 21st century says today you have to be a thinker. You have to be a self-directed learner. I can't tell you everything to do. Can you think for yourself? Can you do something for yourself? So the value that you give yourself is a value the world gives you. The world sees you as you see yourself. So the, the challenge is in the 21st century is how do we change our thinking and feelings about ourselves so we can maximize our potential as a human being and build value around skills, passion, purpose, and our ability to be able to create and shape our own future in the 24 hours that we have every single day, which is what makes us equal, Mark. Everybody has 24 hours. The question is what? What are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? And so <laughs> stop wasting your time talking about nothing. Stop wasting your time focused on everything else around you except you. Stop wasting your time on giving all your time away to everybody else and start prioritizing what you do well around the most powerful word in the world, which is love. What do you love to do? What can you do well? Look at the glass half full as opposed to half empty and transform your mind from negative to positive based on your power as a human being. Now, I'm going to go ahead and invite folks right now if they want to uh, give us some questions. Mm -hmm. They can just enter that in the comments section right there on Facebook Live. And uh, I've got a little um, iPad over here and I'll be able to see your questions as they pop up. And uh, if we've got time, I'd love to be able to answer some of the audience's questions if you don't mind. Absolutely. Okay, well, we'll just kind of watch for some of those and if some relevant ones pop up, I'll try to keep an eye okay. on that. Uh, in fact, I see some are coming in already. I, I want to go back just briefly, though, because I, I really want to explore a little bit more of, of Stedman Graham and mm -hmm. how you came to be who you are today. Your time in the military, four years in the Army? Uh, three and a half years. Three right. and a half years in the Army. And tell me about that experience and how that shaped your identity. Wow, great experience for me. Uh, I was a ball player. Um, I went to college, played ball on scholarship, that kind of thing. Um, uh, went into the military. Um, you know, I was kind of spoiled, um, had really not a lot of structure. You know, you, were, you have an entitlement mentality, so you think you're all of that. And so uh, the military really gave me a sense of why this country is so great, greatest country in the world. Right. And I'm so fortunate, and I hope the people in America feel like that they're so fortunate to be an American because um, we have systems that work, and we have a strong infrastructure, right. and we have possibilities. And success is when preparation meets opportunity. So you can be, you know, you can, you, can, you can prepare yourself all your life, but you need the opportunity, which is why so many people come to this country, because they have the opportunity. They want to work. They want to take care of their families. They want to have a quality of life. They want to raise their social economic development. Right. But they need the opportunity, and they need to be someplace where the systems work. And you can go to school here free. You can uh, open your own business. You can come in and not even be a uh, citizen of the country and, and make a million dollars a year if you have the creativity and the, uh, and the opportunity. It, it, are we still the land of opportunity? I mean, do you still have that sense of optimism that, there, that we both probably had when we were elementary school kids? We have a, a foundation for developing opportunity based on new ideas and thoughts. Everything starts with a thought. Um, the thing I would say about our country is we got to get back to education as a foundation for growth and development because Einstein said you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that caused it. Oh boy, isn't that the truth? So what you need is you need information, you need content, you need to realize that this is a skill-based economy and you have to have skills to be competitive in the marketplace. The greatest opportunity for us is to be able to take this country and take this little device right here, okay? This is a, a smartphone, and to be able to download content and make this relevant to our talents, our skills, our abilities, our passions, and to our purpose. So identity leadership 
is is not based on the on the fact that you just need it to be a leader. It's based on the fact that you can't lead anybody else until you first lead yourself. So self mastery, self actualization, Maslow's highest level of development, uh, self development, self discipline, self efficacy. All those things are very important. So you got to first work on self to solve your problem. You know, a lot of our students are uh, in the military or transitioning out of the military. And I think what you're saying is especially relevant to them. And many of them have already discovered that they need to do something to educate themselves for a new job, for a new world, and for things that are changing all the time. Um, they're on to something, aren't they? Well, uh, the, the beautiful thing about the military, it gives you the structure and the discipline so that you can maintain consistency once you decide who you are. And I think the missing piece for a lot of the military is the transition from military, you know, and the value system that they, you know, gave you to the real world. Right. So how do you take those same skills and apply that to a passion. And, and that's of course what we help them do. And you've had a long-term relationship with National University, so. National University is a great university and they're, they're very flexible and they've given me the opportunity to teach identity leadership to um, thousands of people, um, hopefully around the world. <laughs> so well, hopefully we're reaching a few today. Yeah. And, and let me tell everybody too that uh, in, in the future, hopefully the very near future here, I know Stedman is going to be teaching uh, some of these seminars here at National University, so really keep an eye out for that. Uh, follow us on Facebook and, and we'll let you know when Stedman is ready to schedule uh, a seminar here and we'll talk about this idea of identity leadership in particular. Um, I know there's nine principles here that you really stress with identity leadership. Now, of course, I've got them in front of me to be able to cheat a little bit here, but um, you start by saying, check your ID. You have to have an identity. So you have to know who you are. And that's like, that's the core foundation for growth and development. Everybody's got 24 hours. How do you take information and make it relevant to the most important word in the world, which is love? Love is the key. It's always love. And so the transformation is moving from negative to positive, from good to, from bad to good, from what you can't do to what you can do, moving into an empowerment, uh, position of surrounding yourself with all the things that you love. How you organize all the things that you, all the foods that you love, all the places you want to travel to, all the kind of work that you love, all the people that you love, all the family that you love, the relationships, all, all those things that focus on um, uh, the word love. What do you love in your life? Write it down, organize it, develop it, build it out, be clear on it, be conscious of it. And then take all the information that you'll ever read in your life, take all the information, organize that around those segments or those areas that you love, and empower that every single day. And you won't have to work a day in your life. You want to take a question or two here? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, uh, let me just look here. I haven't even pre-read these, um, but I think um, Beth is um, vetting these in the back okay. room back here as they come in. Does Stedman have an affirmation for himself that he repeats daily? That's from Wanda and Barbara. Uh, my affirmation is I'm looking for ways to improve my life, so I want to develop a process of continuous improvement. And I do that by, by developing a learning system for myself that allows me to, again, Einstein said you cannot solve a problem with the same information that, that, that causes. So you need new information to be able to think differently. So I try to change my thinking and improve my thinking every day. Uh, Carolyn wants to know, oh, this is interesting, what is the best advice you would give to my students. I teach at a high poverty school where children lack basic needs. And, and you and I were going to talk a little bit, uh, maybe going forward here about Black History Month. And in fact, the, the theme this year is the crisis in black education. So um, what about it for Carolyn? Well, you have to believe in yourself, number one. And you have to realize that the process of success is the same for everybody. That's what I got. And so the process for me is no different than the process for somebody in Brazil or Africa or India or Philadelphia or New York. And once you learn the process, and the, then you can apply that same process to you or your kids or to your classroom. And the process is, is you have to know who you are. You have to have a purpose 
right? You have to build a foundation, you know, based on what you love and care about. And you have to work on that every single day so that you have a skill. And you can develop a number of skills and you can build value around that. And, that and, you, and you practice that and you become an expert in your field or an authority in your field. And that's what you get paid for. That's what you serve the world with. Now, I know people are listening right now and they're saying, oh my gosh, you know, it's, I got a lot of thinking to do here. And you walk them through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's part of you know, your, your teaching here. You ask people to create your vision. You really can't do a whole lot until you create your vision, can you? Well, you can't do anything with vision until you find out what you want to do. So you have to know what you want to do in your life, and then you have to love it. What's you know? stopping people from making that commitment, that decision? The, the training, they, they're so programmed, believing that they have to give everything away and they forget about themselves. This happens a lot with mothers who give everything to their family and to their children and they forget about themselves. So you can't give unless you can get. You first have to have before you can give it away. So the idea of building your own capacity and building your potential and understanding how to do that and realizing that the process of, for that is the same for everybody. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take that information that the 1% have. You know, you got 99% of the people who are followers. That represents about 6.99 billion people who have to transform into a leadership mindset, an ownership mindset, a, not a consumer mindset, but a producer mindset and a performance mindset based on who you are. Not who I am, but who you are. And then take that and then build that and that becomes what you work on for the rest of your life to create value within yourself. The value that you give yourself is the value the world gives you. The world sees you as you see yourself. Can I change your perspective and your thinking about yourself on a regular basis? Can I create a process for continuous improvement so you understand the value of education and knowledge? If I take it away, you're nothing. Yeah, the process of continuous education. Um, again, I want to relate it back to a lot of our audience here and a lot of our, our students. Um, many of our learners are um, adult learners. In fact, most of them are adult learners. Many of them, as I said, are transitioning out of the military. For a lot of folks, it's a second chance to get the education that they never got. So something has happened in their life that they've realized the importance of that. Then what do they do? They, they, they kind of decided what they want to do and kind of how sure. they're going to do it, maybe with further in their education, but then what? You have to grow. It's called a growth mindset. So you have to grow it. You start the small, it's a small step process, like getting to the top of the mountain. One step, one step, one step, another step. Pretty soon you're getting closer to the top of the mountain. But, it's, but you got to go in the right direction. And you have to have the right instruction. And you have to have the right information. So I suffered from the wrong instruction. I was told, go to work, go to school, get a job. Okay, but nobody ever said, what, this is what you should be doing. This is what you're good at. This is your, these are your talents. These are your skills. So, so when, did, when, did, when did that emerge on. for you? When did that picture well, start I to take to shape? Well, I had to discover it because, well, I'm around, you know, one of the most influential persons, person in the world who, I mean, people in the world who, who actually, you know, understands that. So I was fortunate. Uh, to have Oprah's influence. I was fortunate to uh, have other people's influence. A guy named Bob Brown, I worked for a number of years, we traveled all over the world. And so I was fortunate to be able to have that exposure. I was fortunate to be able to learn how to play golf and, and uh, have that as a network to help me uh, you know, become um, close to a lot of other folks that helped me. So you know, one of the steps is uh, build a dream team. And it says, no one makes it alone, step seven. No one makes it alone, no matter woman is an island unto themselves. You cannot make it by yourself. You need a team, and you need mentorship, and you need role models, and you need those people you can believe in, see how it works. I'm, I'm smiling to myself now, because when you first walked in and we introduced ourselves, you saw our team. And I think we acknowledged early on that this was a team effort 
to bring this to our audience today. And you smiled, I think there was a little uh, something, your eyes lit up a little bit. I think you appreciated the fact that that's what we're developing here at National. Everything starts with a thought. It starts with an idea. And somebody comes up with the idea. And then you need to build that idea based on a collective consciousness of people coming together saying, you know what, I believe in that idea too. And then have another person say, oh, I believe in that idea too. And that's what leadership is all about. Leadership is about organizing and aligning people who are going in the same direction based on a thought and a dream. I have a dream. How many people can buy into that same dream? And is that dream relevant to everybody that we meet? That's why I love the work that I teach, leadership, because the transformation of moving a person from a follower to a leader of themselves, to me, is relevant to everybody. Well, you, and you do teach this to everybody, and that's, mm -hmm. that's another thing that I really want to kind of emphasize today is folks may be watching and say, well, he, I know he's talking to somebody, but he's not necessarily talking to me. You teach this at a corporate level around the world, but you teach it to kids as well. And in fact, haven't you written to children as well? I have a Teens to Make It Happen book, which is a New York Times bestseller. And we have curriculum in the schools. And I taught 150 schools the last two years, uh, teaching parents, students, and, and principals uh, about the process of success and how it works, because the process is the same for everybody. And it eliminates all the labels. So we want you not to be a victim. We want you to be a victor based on self-directed learning, lifelong learning, and understanding the value of education. So that when you read that book in school, that science book, that math book, that history book, you can take that information and make it relevant to your development so you can empower yourself every single day. This is not playtime today. Yeah, you know, I, I know folks are watching this all over the world right now on, on Facebook Live, but, you know, we're here in La Jolla. Uh, out of, not you know, a bad place. Not, not a bad place to be. And I know that mm -hmm. you do a lot of work uh, right up the road. We were talking um, about the work that you do up on Oceanside. Mm -hmm. Can you just share just a little bit of that with folks, uh, you know, here in Southern California so they kind of know what you're doing here? Well, um, I've been working in community for a long time, um, uh, probably almost 30 years of building uh, a few communities. And uh, my focus now is building a learning community. And next week we have a, a Youth Success Week there, and we've been working on that for the last four years um, to develop a National Youth Success Week utilizing Oceanside as a model so that people, so our communities would start to focus on our young people to empower them because our communities are only as good as our young people. And if we can work with the school system, which we are in Oceanside and uh, the district there, to provide programs for our young people that would involve parents, you know, we do this all week long, parents, uh, leadership programs, uh, teacher programs, uh, anything that would uh, allow us to organize the resources of the community so those resources would come back into this community and empower our young people and then what you have is you have a future because you have no future in the community without young people. I'm going to go back to a couple of the questions here. Uh, Seku wants to know what branch of the military you served in. Army. Army. And I think we talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordy's or Jordis uh, asks, how does someone determine what they love when they have an interest in so many things. Uh, God bless you for asking that question because I struggle with that for so long. Um, I have an answer. I'd love to hear yours first and then I'll, then I'll share. Well, I was talking with, notice, how I, jumped, you, notice how I jumped right in and I'm perfectly willing to be interviewed. Uh, I was talking with um, uh, Charlie Gibson yeah. on Good Morning America. And I was telling him, I said, you know, I kind of, I lament the fact that I never became an expert in anything. And he said, Mark, don't worry about it. You and I are not journalists, we're generalists. We're interested in a lot of good, a lot of things, and we're good at that. And I was very, very happy with that because I realized I'm, I, it, it's okay to be interested in all kinds of things. And for what I do as an interviewer, that works. So now I'm, I'm very happy with that. And I, if I find something I'm really interested in, I'll learn more about it to the point where I feel like I've, I've learned as much as I want to learn, and then I move on. But you're very natural what you do. You have a great voice. You love what you do. You're, you're good at ad living, you know. So you're good uh, at making people feel good, no, too. Thank no, you. No, <laughs> no, I'm just telling you the truth. So, and so you'll focus on your talents, and you, you know, you, you focus on 
what you do well, and that becomes your way that you make a living and all of that. So it's unnatural for you. So you're doing exactly what you want to do. The key about um, uh, uh, focusing on things that, too many things, uh, is that you lose the focus. That's true. Whatever you focus on expands. But you also have, have to have, you know, a strong amount of, 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 uh, or a lot of skills today in the 21st century. It used to be 20 years ago that we had manufacturing, we had the institution, they would take care of you, you had a job, you had the community, right. everything was already done for you, you make a pretty good living. Retire, and one job for things. your entire life. Today, 21st century, you need skills. So you need to figure out where the marketplace is going, who you're going to become, how to do that, what education is relevant to your development. So you need specific skills today, not generalized information. So to answer that this uh, person's question, you really do need to, you need to choose. You need to be diversified in your revenue base and your income opportunities, okay, so you can raise your social economic development and have control over your own personal professional life so you can make choices based on having access to a global marketplace. Uh, Chris Callahan kind of asks a question that's along those lines. It says, uh, you speak a lot of your admiration of the possibilities uh, America can unleash for people. Given our current political situation, do you feel that we're a divided America right now? If so, how might this hinder or help the achievement of Amer American possibilities and dreams? Are we headed towards classism? Well, that's, I know you don't generally like to delve too deeply into politics, but as it's relevant to identity leadership, how do you answer that question? I answer it by uh, don't divide yourself. Don't marginalize yourself regardless of what's happening in the external world, regardless of what, what that is. Um, so if you focus on self-mastery as a way to empower yourself, then you have the ability to be able to take care of yourself, uh, take care of your family, uh, help your community locally, help the organizations that you're a part of, and then you can be a contributing member of society, and, and then you can be an example for somebody else. And that's the only thing that's important. Uh, Chris says, if you could go back in time 40 years, <laughs> what advice would you give your younger self, given what you know now? Um, I'd be more of a reader. So I'd understand the, the more, and I would focus more on education and knowledge and information and really uh, focus on uh, learning as a way to empower myself if I, if I knew about what I know now. For the folks that are just joining us, yeah. uh, we're talking with Stedman Graham. Uh, it's, it's been an incredible conversation so far, and I, and I don't want to wrap it up unless you have to go someplace I'm right good. now, yeah. because we've still got some questions coming in from people. And uh, if you are just joining us, Stedman teaches identity leadership, and he's been doing that for years all around the world. And at some point in the very near future, we hope to have you doing it here at National University, at least have a seminar here. So uh, we'll work on getting that scheduled and you continue to follow us on Facebook and we'll let you know when we get that all dialed in and we'll, we'll hold it right up here, hopefully right up here in La Jolla. Got a great building in here. So I'd love to invite you out for that. Uh, is it uh, Chadisa wants to know, how do you know what you are, uh, oh, that you are heading in the right direction? How do you know that you're headed in the right direction? Wow, interesting question. Yes, Very it good is. Question. So vision, which is the second step, once you understand who you are, you have to visualize where you want to go. So that's an alignment issue. So now you're laying out a structure or a process for achieving results based on the end in mind. What is the end? Or what's your vision? And how big can you make it? What's it look like? And how do you apply that vision to your passions? So I want you to have as many passions as you possibly can have. I want you to write all the ideas down on a piece of paper. And then I want you to begin to organize this because this is an organizational process of taking that vision and applying that vision to what you love so that you can build it and grow it and develop it so that you can achieve more than the average person. So we live kind of in an, in an average society. And, Boy, and so <laughs> the move out of that... We, we could do a whole hour yeah, just on move that, out of that we? average system and create your own, you have to be able to step outside the box, right, so that you can now self-actualize your own potential based on what's possible for you as a person. In America, the greatest country in the world, what is possible for you? What is the answer, Mark? Anything. Anything. 
Okay, so once you understand the process of how to do that and to organize it and understand the process of putting the pieces of the puzzle in place so you can paint the picture, right? But you gotta have a picture that you, that you, that you see uh, so you can, well, once you see it, you can be it. And then you develop you the process of doing it. you have to be able to see it, it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Wanda says, what about people uh, that want to work on a skill or a trade? How do you motivate them? Um, well, you motivate them based on their natural abilities. So does your natural abilities and what you love apply to that skill? Do you like it? Is it really work? A lot of times it's not work because I just love it. What you do, Mark, is not work. Exactly. You know, it's easy for you. It's, it, you know. But, but it's, it's easy, but when you say it's not work, Truly, I don't mind working a 14, 16 hour day sometimes. I'm having fun. This is fun. That's and if, if somebody's gonna pay me to do this, I have to kind of hold my breath sometimes. Think, Boy, I hope they don't catch on to how much fun I'm having. They're gonna want some of the money back. That's the answer. You know, it's fun. That's why LeBron James is such a great athlete and Michael Jordan's a, you know, is a great athlete because it's fun, they love it. So find out what you love is the key to greatness and opportunity. Okay, uh, just, uh, Matt just handed me a note here and said, for more information on Stedman's upcoming seminar, RSVP at nu.edu slash leadership. Okay, so if you want more information, uh, just RSVP at nu.edu slash leadership and we'll be in touch and we'll uh, make sure that you know exactly when Stedman is going to be here. Uh, Barbara says, how do you make decisions? Are you spiritually inclined like Oprah or more of a strategist? Uh, I have a strong spiritual base because uh, I think John 12 or John 13 is God is love. All you have to do is focus on love and that's your, that's your spiritual base. Which kind of is a question that I was thinking about asking you earlier, but I'm glad that Barbara broached the, the spirituality part of it because for me, when you talk about your purpose, that is necessarily for me a spiritual question. I don't know if it is for everybody else, but it is for me. What, what is my purpose? How do you discover that? Well, it, again, it, the transformation is always love. So there's only two choices in life. It's either looking at the glass half empty or half full, it's being negative or positive, it's, it's courage or fear, it's love or hate. So, you know, the transformation is always love. So to be able to move out of your history into your imagination and move out of that historical baggage that we all get stuck in, which I've had to deal with because the foundation of my existence was always negative. So, so I look at the glass half empty as opposed to half full. So my transform for information is to move from looking at the glass half full as opposed to half empty. And I have to work on that every single day. Every day. And, okay. and that's another thing that uh, maybe we should emphasize to folks is this is a process. This is not something that you, you, you read one book and your whole life changes and tomorrow everything's wonderful. It's a process, but you know what? Enjoy the process. Well, know the process. Know that you actually can do it. And people have to give you the content and the information to be able to do that. This is why I teach this. It's because I'm just trying to share with you what I've learned throughout the years so you're not stuck on race, you're not stuck on your gender, you're not stuck on what you can't do. There is a process for it. And again, identity leadership is not about leading a bunch of people. It's about can you lead yourself first? Can you empower yourself first? And then you can serve the world. So this is a service leadership mentality. How do I give back to myself first? How do I give back to my family? How do I give back to my community and to my country based on my leadership abilities? Before I let you go, I, I, I can't ask you which one of your books is your favorite. It's like asking which one of your kids is your favorite. We all know we have one. We just can't tell them, right? <laughs> Kidding, of course. But if folks are watching right now, and, and this is resonating for them, is there one of those 11 books or, or a couple of them that you suggest they start with? Well, You Can Make It Happen is a New York Times bestseller, 
And uh, that was a, a tremendous opportunity for me to write that about the nine-step success process. Teens Can Make It Happen, strong book. Um, and again, you know, uh, teens today are bombarded by all the external stuff on the outside and they're dealing with this and dealing with that and they forget about themselves. And they don't have a process for organizing themselves, setting goals, developing a vision for themselves, organizing a plan, building a dream team, building a value system for themselves, being able to understand how to take information and education, make it relevant to their heart and soul, transfer it to their mind so they become a thinking human being. Okay, and they become engaged in the world that they live in, in this global marketplace, and then be able to take that information and create and plan your own future, okay, and then be able to create a lifestyle around things that are important to you. Because if you get that at an early age, like 13 or 14 or 8 or 9, say you get it at 13, you got 13, 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, probably 103, you got 90 years to develop a process of continuous improvement where you're a better person today than you were yesterday. That's a beautiful process. And what a great way to wrap it up. Stedman, I, I, we could honestly do this for hours. Uh, I know your, your seminar goes into so much more detail. So let me just remind you folks again that are watching out there, for more information on Stedman's upcoming seminar, RSVP at nu.edu slash leadership. RSVP at nu.edu slash leadership. Stemma Graham, what a pleasure. So much. We're blessed by you uh, being so here today and, and honored that you took the time for us and uh, I can't wait to talk to you again. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Folks, thanks for joining us and uh, you check us out at uh, nu.edu anytime here at National University and uh, if you've got questions about your education and uh, developing some skills down the road that you think might enhance your life, uh, we'd love to par your partner with you on that. So. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you again next time on Facebook Live. Thanks again, Stedman. My pleasure.